Slaughter fans, I'm Katie Slaughter. I'm an engineer by day, wedding planner by night, still grinding that nine to five. We don't talk about it here. It's only drama in my real life, but I actually reading about it, if you cannot tell. Today I'm going to go into some messy Facebook drama, some bridesmaids who are getting in trouble or causing trouble, fully anonymized for your viewing pleasure. If it fails to teach us anything, we will give it the big fat slaughter seal of failure. Something like that. No, so, all right, let's go in. This is our first story. How can I communicate to my friend that she hurt me? I don't wanna make her feel like a bad friend, but she didn't show up for me and it really hurt my feelings. I consider her one of my best friends, if not my best friend. My bachelorette party was this past weekend and she didn't come. When planning my bachelorette party back in January, I was trying to schedule it around her work schedule. I was even asked her opinion about specific details and location ideas. So her not coming last minute was very disheartening and really hurt my feelings. Ultimately, she wasn't able to come to my bachelorette party because she got stuck at Coachella. Oh boy. Her plan was to leave Coachella on night two and come to my bachelorette with a rental car. Long story short, rental car didn't happen and she wasn't able to come for my bachelor for the night she planned to. I'm sure it was outside of her control. However, I just can't stop this from weighing heavy on my heart. Why did she have to even go to Coachella? I'm her best friend. I only have one bachelorette party. I really want to talk with her, but don't want to make her feel like a bad friend. However, I feel like she really let me down. How would you go about this? Oh, that would hurt. That would hurt really bad. It doesn't sound like she wants to burn any bridges, okay? Uh, so probably what I would tell her is basically have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Do not do this over text. If you are going through something similar, do not do this over text. So much can get lost in communication. People can get way more defensive. It can escalate, it would be bad. My recommendation would be to just use use I statements instead of you statements. I've definitely talked about that before on, on my channel, but if you use I statements instead of you statements, it's much less likely that they'll get defensive. So an example would be like, I feel hurt when you or I felt hurt and still feel hurt when because you went to Coachella and instead of coming to my bachelorette party which only happens once the general formula should be I felt X when you did Y because of Z so do not use you statements for this kind of thing so if you are using you statements, then it'd be like, you really hurt me. And suddenly that person's going to close off and they're not gonna wanna talk to you. So that's what I would say that she should do is it, since she seems to want to keep this relationship, I would not be happy if my best friend was like, yeah, going to Coachella instead of your bachelorette party. That would not be okay with me. I would be upset. I mean, like Coachella happens every year, right? Coachella happens every year, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, Coachella happens every year. It shows you what I know about pop culture. Someone wrote, I don't think you should just let it go, lol. You adjusted your bachelorette to someone you consider a close friend. You generally only get married once, lol. <laughs> All these lols are getting to me. Like, ha ha, this is so funny. You can go to Coachella again, I roll. Your friend is inconsiderate, yes. People have their own lives, but this wasn't a last minute thing. I assume a lot of planning went into this and it's so disrespectful of the time you put into it. <sighs> no, I also agree that she shouldn't just let it go. I think she definitely needs to approach the situation. I I agree. Like if, if you are going to Coachella instead of my bachelorette party, I'm going to be upset since you only get married once. Someone else wrote, I'm in similar shoes, but it's due to her toxic partner. Okay. Trigger warning for toxic relationships and needy men who don't go away. My wedding was last Saturday. My bestie came in from Kentucky for it as my maid of honor. She reluctantly told me on the way down that she was back with her toxic controlling ex whatever. He wasn't coming, so I figured it was fine. Nope, it was not fine. Within hours of her arrival, he was calling her and accusing her of hooking up with people in my town, even though she was almost literally glued to my hip all weekend. 
He called her like 30 times a day if she didn't answer because we were busy. He went off the rails. He even called on my wedding day while we were getting our hair done and refused to let her off the phone until he was satisfied. If this is you, like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. You are worth more than that, okay? You have my full permission to leave. It's, you're worth more than that. You, sh you should not be letting men, like, trample you like this. This is controlling and honestly awful behavior. So I had a distracted, weepy, sad, anxious maid of honor all weekend. <laughs> Poor thing. Poor thing. She kept going to sit down in the car during our rehearsal dinner to talk to him. And then she left halfway through my reception to go back home and ran off with the guest late night popcorn snack that was in her car. At least $80 worth of popcorn. And left her glasses in my car that I ended up having to mail back. I am upset, so I'm giving myself some time to calm down before I say anything about it. That's smart. I also don't know him well, and he doesn't know me. It's like he's not worth- <laughs> he does not sound worth getting to know. <laughs> but I know enough about him that I plan to absolutely tear him a new one when I go visit her. I am looking forward to that. I'm just mimicking these emojis. I can't wait to tell him what a pathetic, narcissistic, weak, feeble-minded man he is, and that's just the PG stuff I can post on Facebook. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. My advice to you is to make notes about what you want to say to your friend, give it time, and do it verbally rather than text or letter, either over the phone or in person if possible. Yep, that's kind of what I said, that last part. Wow, holy crap. She then later explained, I actually asked her, I was like, what a sad, ex what a sad excuse for me. It was like, I, I basically just wrote like, wow, I stand this energy. And I was like, what kind of excuses would he even have if you did that? And she wrote, he doesn't have any excuses. He's just a bad person who thinks he owns the person he's with and thinks he's God's gift to women. When he barely registers on the scale of attraction, he has absolutely nothing to offer besides being a bad boy. Take him out of BFE, Kentucky, drop him in a place that has standards, and nobody would even give him a second look. Like I said, he is weak, pathetic, and sporting a double-digit IQ. I look forward to chewing him and spitting him out. Hopefully, he won't even want to look in her direction after I'm done with him. The last one like him didn't. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. Um, I think like you only had no, like you probably do need to be careful because if he's abusive, like he if he's really abusive and actually you know. She's got bruises, probably want to handle that situation a little more carefully. But if he's only verbally abusive and controlling, this might be okay. But yeah, oh, she, I don't know her, but it doesn't matter. She deserves better than that guy. She's a good friend though, this friend, this friend. Uh, Cause she's like, I care about you and I'm gonna fight for you. All right, here's another story. This one's actually from the perspective of a wedding planner. Have y'all ever experienced bridesmaids disrespecting you and then writing one star reviews over the crap you had nothing to do with? Examples, decorating and the champagne tower was supposed to be done by the bridesmaids, cake topper breaking. We had to improvise by adding on baby's breath to the nothing but cakes. Matron of honor kept snapping her fingers at me was up in my face and talked to me like I was just some peasant. Like, what is wrong with people? I don't understand anyone who disrespects someone in service. Like, if you were in a service position, like a planner or a bartender or someone at McDonald's, like, that does not give you permission to just treat them like a peasant. It doesn't. That is not cool. It's not okay. She writes that the ridiculous list goes on. She then continues, the bride and groom and parents were totally fine with us. It was just the bridesmaids. There were a few comments. Someone wrote that they have a clause in their contract. They don't tolerate abuse, blah, blah, blah. She said that she's had to walk out of two weddings due to this due to like abuse, but I'm not there to be verbally abused and treated like a slave. Oh, yeah, we are not there to be verbally abused. That's, it's just wrong. 
it's just wrong. The original writer wrote, I spoke to the mom of the bride that if we're talked to disrespectfully one more time that we were leaving. They left me alone, but instead five bridesmaids wrote me one star reviews. Oh, that's devastating. That is devastating to a small business. And it doesn't sound like it was earned either. I mean, I guess we can only hear this side of the perspective, but from this side of the perspective, it sounds like she did nothing wrong. Another person wrote that they have a clause in their contract that only the client can submit a review. Others are submitted, we have a case for slander and we will pursue it. Oh, wait, um, yeah, oh, oh gosh, bring the court into this again. We've never had to use it, but it curbs this kind of behavior and could make the bride have them delete. That's kind of smart for the planner. You should not have to tolerate that kind of BS. All right, did we learn anything from this? We did for uh, at least the, the first story. I think we definitely learned like, oh yeah, use I statements, talk verbally in person instead of over the phone. Another one that we learned, uh, if you are a planner or in a vendor, add a clause in to your contract that helps prevent this kind of thing, anger and stuff. So actually, I don't think we learned or, or I don't think we failed to learn anything. So we didn't, it doesn't get the big fat slaughter seal of failure today. Also, as a reminder, if you are planning your wedding, I have two freebies. So one is a wedding planning timeline and another is a wedding party mini guide that can help you rock being a bridesmaid, groomsman, maid of honor, blah, blah, blah. So it's great. Check it out. Totally free in the description below. If you liked this, check out this video where I go into some crazy Reddit stories where the, uh, oh my gosh, I just, I can't with some of them. They're like wild. They're some of the worst wedding stories that Reddit has seen. So dive into that, it's a good time. Until next time, remember to make that like button blush, nuzzle that sweet subscribe button, but keep it PG for me, okay?